Adam Copeland scared off Christian Cage with a mystery box that said Spike last night on AEW Collision. But what is inside the box? We'll let you know seemingly what the former WWE superstar has planned for Christian Cage in their I Quit match in a couple of weeks' time. Brian Danielson versus Will Ospreay is officially set for AEW Dynasty next month on pay-per-view. Pack is back on AEW television and he has confronted Kazuchika Okada and a big trios match is set between Pack and the new Elite next week on AEW. AEW Dynamite Big Business. Speaking of Big Business, Chris Jericho and Hook are set for a tag team match after Hook came to the aid of Lionheart Chris Jericho last night on Collision. Dax Harwood says the revival is dead last night on Collision and the reason why several NXT stars were frustrated with the Women's Tag Team Championship match on Raw has been revealed. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about this mystery box that says Spike on it that's being carried around by the Rated R superstar Adam Copeland last night on AEW Collision. Now, during last night's episode of AEW Collision, Adam Copeland once again tried to attack the patriarchy and had a mysterious box with him this time. He attacked Christian Cage, Killswitch, and Nick Wayne from the crowd. He was wearing a mask at first first with the announcer suggesting he could be from CMLL. He got in the ring with the box and held up Christian Cage's TNT Championship and he did not reveal what was inside the box but seemingly it had spooked his former best friend. Of course Copeland and Cage will face each other in an I Quit match on the March 20 episode of AW Dynamite that's set to take place in both of their hometown of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. But the question is what is inside the box? Well due to fans in attendance they may have snapped actually what's the surprise for Christian Cage. Now, of course, if you don't wish to be spoiled, if you wish to wait ahead for the future reveal, you can do so by skipping ahead. We'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Once again, spoiler warning. But seemingly, according to fans and attendants, this is what's inside the box labeled Spike. It is indeed a two by four with spikes sticking out of it, kind of reminiscent of Janice. If you remember Janice from the days of TNA wrestling that Abyss used to carry around, it certainly looks like Again, a piece of wood, maybe a 2 by 4 that's got several spikes in it, hence the name of Spike. So what do you make of this angle? What do you make of Adam Copeland dressing up as a luchador last night? What do you make of the feud between the two? And who do you think is going to win the I Quit match in a few weeks' time? Let me know your thoughts and reaction to that in the comment section below. Now, Brian Danielson versus Will Ospreay had been teased on Dynamite. It's been confirmed on Collision last night. AEW Dynasty, the latest new pay-per-view from promoter Tony Khan, is coming to St. Louis, Missouri on April 21st. And Khan wasted little time in announcing the first match on the card. For the first time ever, Will Ospreay will take on Brian Danielson in a dream match between two generations of independent wrestling icons. The first hint of the bout occurred at the end of Wednesday's AEW Dynamite on TBS when Danielson confronted Osprey following his victory over Kyle Fletcher. It was subsequently reported that the match was likely to be booked for the pay-per-view and Khan didn't make fans wait for long for the confirmation. After Danielson defeated Shane Taylor in the opening match of AEW Collision, Osprey returned the favour, coming out to the ring and asking for a pair of microphones. The ensuing exchange led out a simplistic, if clear, rationale for the dream match. Osprey said he He's in AEW to prove he's the best in the world. Danielson wants to give him that chance. Without further ado, Danielson laid out the challenge at Dynasty and Osprey accepted, shaking Danielson's hand. Osprey versus Danielson is the first match locked in for Dynasty, which was announced during the AEW Revolution pay-per-view last Sunday. The two have never met before in a wrestling ring in any promotion and under any stipulation or match type. So this is truly a first time ever bout. What are your thoughts on this? Are you excited by it? Is it a dream match? Let let me know your thoughts about that as well. Now, Pac is back on AEW television, and he made a beeline for the brand new version of The Elite. AEW Collision was an action-packed affair Saturday night, particularly in the first hour of the show, after the rumored dream match between Brian Danielson and Will Ospreay was made official for the new Dynasty pay-per-view on April 21st. The fans in Georgia were treated to the return of former AEW World Trios champion Pac, who is now set to appear on Wednesday's big business uh, edition of Dynamite. Now, it all went down following Kazuchika Okada's first
first AEW match since joining the company full time and becoming an official member of the AEW roster, becoming All Elite on this Wednesday's edition of Dynamite. The match itself was a cursory affair as Okada won a trio squash match alongside the Young Bucks, his fellow members of the new Elite. Afterward, the three were jumped by Eddie Kingston, who they attacked on Dynamite, with Penta El Zeramiedo coming down to aid Kingston against the numbers game. When three on two still proved long odds, Kingston and Penta were joined by Pack, who delivered numerous shots to Okada before the Bucks dragged their partner out the ring. The subsequent promo laid out the challenge, Pack, Kingston and Penta versus the new elite at Big Business. Now, Pack hasn't wrestled since July 26, 2023, when he defeated the luchador known as Gravity on AEW Dynamite in a match straight out of the 2014 Internet Forum. The man who defied gravi defies Gravity versus Gravity, you get the joke here. He had just returned to action the week before at Dynamite Blood and Guts after being out of action with a broken nose. After returning from another injury, his six-man tag team match joins a big business card that includes Darby Allen versus Jay White, Willow Nightingale versus Riho, and Samoa Joe defending the AEW World Championship against Wardlow and the as yet to be unannounced and presumed debut of the newest member of the AEW roster, that being Mercedes Monet. What are your thoughts on that trios match? Are you excited for it? Let me know your reaction to that in the comment section below. Now, Chris Jericho, he's got a new tag team partner. He was Lionheart last night, but he needed some extra heart in the form of Hook. A new tag team partner in AEW for Chris Jericho was revealed last night as Hook came to his aid. After Jericho defeated CML All-Star Titan in a match on last night's collision, there was a run-in attack. The Gates of Agony ran in and attacked Jericho, which summoned some help from an unlikely place. After a backstage interaction between the pair was featured on AEW Dynamite, Hook made the run-in save Jericho with a kendo stick. This seemingly sets up a tag team match with Jericho and Hook against the Gates of Agony, which will be part, could be part of the AEW World Tag Team Championship tournament to crown new champions after the titles were vacated after Sting's retirement. Now, reports over the last few days indicated that Jericho and Sammy Guevara were planned for the tournament, but Guevara's suspension may have put an end to that one. Therefore, Hook may have been slotted in as Jericho's partner instead. So what are your thoughts on this Jericho-Hook tag team? Does it excite you or are you worried when it comes to that as well? Now, speaking of this tag team title tournament, it looks like we're going to see FTR involved, but there were some interesting comments from the former AEW World Tag Team Champions last night on Collision. Now, after the retirement of Sting, as I mentioned, the AEW World Tag Team Championships were vacated by Darby Allen, and it was announced that new champions would be determined by a tournament. Now, after a string of recent losses, last night's collision featured Tony Schiavone hosting an in-ring interview with FTR to discuss the tournament. FTR declared entry, but another tag team interrupted them to make their 2024 television debut. Despite their string of action in Ring of Honor, the infantry, that being Captain Sean Dean and Carly Bravo, hadn't appeared on AEW television in nearly a year. When the infantry brought up FTR's former WWE name of Revival in a clearly deliberate way, within the context of the infantry uh, leading a tag team revival, it was Dax who responded. He informed them that the Revival is dead, and if the infantry and FTR ended up meeting in the tournament, the infantry would be too. Also in the segment, it was revealed that March 16, next week's episode of AW Collision, would mark the start date for the tournament. So that's going to be taking place next week. And finally, this is an interesting story when it comes to the Women's Tag Team Championships in WWE and a bit of frustration when it comes to planning for certain title matches. Now, this past week's episode of NXT was the roadblock special of the show that aired on USA Network, which laid the groundwork for multiple matches at the upcoming NXT Stand and Deliver event over WrestleMania weekend. Now, one of the marquee matches on the show saw the return to NXT for current women's tag team champions Asuka and Kairi Sane, the Kabuki Warriors. They defended their championships against NXT women's champion Lara Valkyria and Tatum Paxley on the show. However, the day before the event, WWE announced that Asuka and Kyrie would defend their titles on Raw this coming week against Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler, seemingly spoiling the result of the match at Roadblock before it had even taken place. Per Sean Rossap of Fight for Select, the NXT officials were very happy to have Asuka and Kyrie on the show, though there was said to be some frustration with them having a title defense already booked for next week's edition of Raw. Roxanne Perez attacked, attacked Valkyria following the bout, seemingly setting up a title match between the two at Standard Deliver. The show also crowned the challenger for Ilya Dragunov's NXT Championship at Standard Deliver when Tony D'Angelo defeated Carmelo Hayes in the show's main event. But there you go, guys. The latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. 
Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.